is that the quiz function uh, is almost nominal, is almost uh, minus. And if you look at the actual forums, the number of um, postings in a particular forum is about three. So you get student says, when's the assignment due? Somebody answers and he writes back and says, okay. So the quality of discussion in our forums is really bad. There's lots of them. So if you look at the number of forums, fine. If you look at the quality of discussion, pretty bad, unless it's for marks. So it really is quite ugly. Um, and I don't quite know what happened to that slide, but it disappeared. Um, um, the, the actual ugly bit is that it's really complex. I'm not going to go through that. But we have not only WebCT and Moodle, we have an in-house thing called CU Forum. The um, Faculty of Engineering has their own sort of Unix-based thingy that they use. Uh, the Faculty of Science, I think, uses four or five different platforms. And um, one of the things we really need to do is to get better coordination. And we can't use our student information system and actually have automatic uh, shifting of data unless we have a centralized uh, system that's being used. So this particular slide has been very useful at Chinese U. You show this to a senior management, and it, it's a driver for actually putting resources into getting better coordination. Um, like most of the universities, Chinese U has had these um, medieval fiefdoms called faculties. And those faculties have been largely independent until recent times. And what's happening, I think, is that the benefits of well-managed centralized services are becoming more apparent. So I think use your bad data and your ugly data to drive change as well as your good data. Um, remember, things get worse before they get better. Innovation uh, is a risky business, and always there are challenges. The, the thing about good innovation is that the J-curve has a small flat thing. All right, now very quickly, what do we do in the e-learning service? The funding we got in 2005, which is now institutionalized, we started it off with a particular grant, but now the university has it as core funding is the e-learning service, which is again, as I said, a partnership between CLIA and ITSC. And I think without that really good uh, partnership, with the library constantly, and as the library's role changes to have learning commons and, and all that sort of thing, then the, use, the value of the library within the system is uh, quite important. And in fact, the library has a fairly key area in our e-learning strategy. So basically, the platform, and notice that worrying about the platform is just one of the things that we do. Um, and we need to make a choice about what to do. Um, support services. The only one I want to really talk about is getting senior management in the faculties on site. So actually talking to deans, associate deans, and, and getting them sort of um, working on it. We work, um, as I think other speakers have said, on actually course design working with people on their teaching and learning, we see that as opportunities to talk about e-learning. The two are not separate. Um, we have e-learning assistants. We now have eight full-time um, young staff who are available to help any teacher set up uh, sites and to do sort of minor sort of technology bits and pieces. Now that means, again, the search intensive university professors are not going to spend lots and lots of time learning how to use uh, new systems that they don't know. Some might, if they happen to like it, but others won't. So you need to provide that sort of support service. Um, the rest of it is obvious, podcasting and all that sort of stuff to come along. Um, we use the right sort of jargon. So we're not just e-learning, we're outcomes-based e-learning and have a website. Um, and again, you, it's sort of part of playing the game that website sort of shows that that diagram, which is our teaching and learning strategy diagram of curriculum alignment, that the elements of in e-learning uh, tools can actually fit into that teaching and learning strategy. The same diagram exists on our e-learning strategy document. So you get a synergy across between teaching and learning and e-learning. Uh, seminars and workshops, well, I think there's buckets of them, and we all do it, and there's a lot more. 
Um, I think one of the things that we do is, is really work on full square development. Um, we, um, because it's a research intensive university, for us, publication is a stronger driver than I think it's been in other universities. And helping people have successful completion down to publication stage helps, as I said, it does sort of work in promotion. We've set up a new system here now that funding at Chinese U depend, is dependent on you joining a cluster, which is a sort of community. So uh, we started up because of people wanting to do video, and we're, there was a huge duplication of services across the university. So now we've managed to centralize that through a video cluster, but the same is true through an e-learning cluster. It started off with technical support, but has ended up being about um, more about sort of um, community and so on. As I said, promotion at Chinese U, if you, if we can show that it counts to be, have a good teaching score, innovation helps you get a good teaching score, etc. Um, promotion, that's obvious. We have these departmental e-learning liaison people. I can't say they do a hell of a lot, but it's a good idea. It will work eventually. Um, our expo, I hope all of you come this year. It's usually in October. Everyone is welcome. And an annual um, conference that sort of really quite works very well. And, and that's photos from the expo and everyone has a good time. Uh, research. Um, well, yes, it is that we are a research centre as well as a TNL support centre. And we have done a huge amount of research and I think that research is a driver within the institution. Um, and uh, yeah, I think those sorts of, some of the sorts of things that we've done papers on. Um, and I'll just show you one example. The digital native stuff, and the reason I mention it is that we started off with the naive conception that there were digital natives and digital immigrants, and that the students were digital natives and were all up there, and the teachers were Luddites and all down there. Um, our data doesn't show that. Our data shows, as it has in the UK and Australia, that the situation is not like that. Maybe some of the older professors, and maybe I'm again being naive, are a little bit in the Luddite stage, but it's the difference between the students and the teachers in access to and use of technology is not as big as you think. So this is shown because it's a pretty set of colours. Um, but and, in, and while, you know, again, you read the paper, um, it's online, um, you, you can see that obviously in social networking, the purple means the students do it more than teachers. But there's some stuff over here on the basic use of the web. Where the teachers are there than the students? This is self-perception data. But you need to get this data, and you then need to reflect on what it means. And I do not believe that we have this, this simple uh, digital natives, uh, digital intent story. Um, what, I'm just showing how many papers there are, and that's the papers I mentioned. Uh, I think the final comment is that this whole sort of thing about e-learning is not just about a platform. It's about a number of initiatives. Now, this diagram, this picture, you can either see it as a sort of disaster imploding, and Bob, I don't like the tsunami um, reference. It's a destructive sort of an image. Um, and we, of course, are evolving, outward-reaching, um, set of possibilities. So it's complex, it's dynamic, it's um, a lot of opportunities exist, but it has to be multifaceted, it has to be data driven. Um, and that's it. Thank you.